Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with day four of the Israel-Hamas war, which now includes a hostage crisis. We'll get to more on that later in the show. The surprise attack by the Gaza-based militant group Hamas shocked Israelis and the world after the group launched an attack on a concert in southern Israel near the Gaza border. And armed men kidnapped or murdered Israeli citizens in their homes and cars in several border areas. Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, have since bombarded Gaza with aerial bombs, with Israeli officials telling residents to leave the blockaded strip of land, which now faces an Israeli siege and a potential ground operation. The Israeli government announced today that it has regained control of the towns attacked by Hamas. But the devastation is vast, and the destruction on either side of the wall between southern Israel and Gaza is almost unfathomable. The Israeli military said it struck hundreds of Hamas targets overnight in Gaza. Tens of thousands of residents fled their homes and re as relentless airstrikes leveled buildings. Fishing boats and other vessels were on fire after Israel pounded the port Gaza city with airstrikes, the port of Gaza city with airstrikes. You can see here the wide scale destruction in Gaza's Jabalia refugee camp caused by Israeli airstrikes in the area. And in the city of Ashkelon, Hamas said it launched a major missile attack in response to the displacement of civilians. Many of the rockets fired towards Ashkelon were intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system, which is designed to shoot down incoming projectiles. At the border itself, Israeli troops are massing, getting ready for a potential ground incursion into Gaza. Meanwhile, deadly clashes at Israel's northern border with Lebanon are raising fears of a broader regional conflict. The conflict, as of now, has already killed nearly 2,000 people. The death toll in Israel has surpassed 1,000, and at least 919 people have been killed in Gaza and the West Bank, according to the health ministries there. President Biden said at least 14 American citizens are among the dead and confirmed that American citizens are among the hostages held by Hamas. Earlier today, he addressed where the U.S. stands. You know, there are moments in this life, and I mean this literally, when the pure, unadulterated evil is unleashed on this world. The people of Israel lived through one such moment this weekend. Moss offers nothing but terror and bloodshed with no regard to who pays the price. The loss of innocent life is heartbreaking. Like every nation in the world, Israel has the right to respond. Around the world, countries are scrambling to find citizens dead or missing in this war, and that includes the U.S. In a news conference in Tel Aviv, relatives of American citizens who are missing or believed to have been taken hostage by Hamas pleaded with authorities in the U.S. and Israel for help. Both my brother and my sister we're on the call with her as the terrorist barged into her home. And we heard a little, heard a little bit of screaming. And that's, uh, that was our, our last contact with her. It is our hope, which is a little bit ridiculous at this stage to say that um, the optimistic scenario here is that she's held hostage in Gaza and not dead on the street of the kibbutz where we grew up. At least 100 people are believed to be hostages of Hamas, and the group promises to execute them in response to attacks in Gaza. I'm joined now by MSNBC chief correspondent Ali Velshi in Ashdod, Israel. Uh, Ali, it has been quite a 24 hours. Please give us an update on what you're seeing there, what you're hearing. Well, first of all, that's uh, you can't see it uh, because it's dark, but that's Gaza. It's 40 kilometers behind me, but every now and then you'll see a flash uh, and then you'll hear the, the thud. The air attacks on Gaza continue tonight. They are coming from two places. Uh, there are jets that fly over us, and then you uh, see the, the bombing. Uh, right now, we don't have jets. They're working on four-hour shifts. The Air Force bombards for four hours. They're off now, and then it becomes the Navy. They send, uh, they send uh, cruise missiles in from the Mediterranean. It's 
right now it's the Navy's shift to, to bomb Gaza. It is a developing humanitarian crisis. It's closed off. From the Israeli perspective, you heard from President Biden today. You heard for, about the support for Israel that America is providing. About 100 kilometers this way, there's an air base. Uh, Americans have landed their first plane there with munitions for, uh, for Israel. There's two sort of camps in Israel. One says pummel Hamas and decapitate them for everything they did. The other camp, by the way, you can hear the, the bombs going off. You can hear the explosions behind me, perhaps. The other camp are the families of those who are being held hostage. And what they want is their family members back. Their whole point here is do whatever you need to do to Hamas afterward, get our families out. The complexity of this joy is the way to get the families out. There's two ways to do that. One is a negotiation with, with Hamas, which the Israelis find distasteful at the best of times, particularly after this attack on Saturday. America doesn't have a relationship with, with uh, Hamas, nor does Israel. So you'd have to use an intermediary for that, possibly Qatar. Iran is their other friend, but America doesn't have a relationship with Iran either. Option two is moving troops into Gaza and trying to find those people. This is fraught with peril because of the density of, of Gaza Strip and, and Gaza City. So that is the, the, the problem in Israel right now. These hostages, uh, it is a, it's, a, it's an intractable issue because not only are Israelis feeling remarkable deep fear uh, for after what happened the other day, there's anger, there's anguish, the streets of the cities. And last night you and I were talking when I was in, uh, in Tel Aviv, they're empty. Uh, the, the, the fear is, is tangible, and everybody knows somebody who has been affected by this, Joy. So uh, both this side of the border and the Gaza side of the border, people are living in fear tonight. Let me, let's talk a little bit more about this hostage crisis, because I think you, you put your, your finger on it, is that the hostages presumably are across, as you just pointed to, in Gaza. So they are inside Gaza, where Israel, you know, their intelligence obviously failed in terms of not anticipating the attacks. They don't clearly have that many eyes inside of there. Uh, on the Israeli side, do they have any idea where those hostages might be, is first part of the question. And the second part is is Egypt being engaged? Because, of course, we know that if we put the map up again, on the other side of Gaza is Egypt. And that's the only other way out, by the way, of of uh, Gaza is to go into Correct. Egypt. We know that border crossing has been bombed, so that's not even open. It, it, how would even Israeli troops get in? Is there is there a plan? Are they talking about how they would even go and try to find the hostages, which we now know might include some Americans as well? So here's the situation. There are always Israeli drones over Gaza. I Israel can see everything that you can see from above Gaza. They can see the entire landscape, which is, begs the question how these, uh, these uh, Hamas attackers came to learn how to para paraglide and, and do things like that, because they couldn't do it in sight of the Israelis. But Israel can't see what's in those buildings. It can't see what's underneath those buildings, and that may be where the hostages are. It's a small place, but it's all buildings and it's all densely populated. If you have 100 hostages, you could spread them all over the place and use them as human shields. So would that be a rescue mission? Because otherwise, it's just going to be door-to-door combat in a, in a place that the Gazans know better than the Israelis do, and that's going to end up in a lot of tragedy on both sides. Now, as to your second question about Egypt, there is a crossing. It's called the Rafah crossing in Egypt. There are people amassing at that border. The United Nations says we're, we're around 200,000 Gazans are now displaced from their homes because their homes have been bombed and they have nowhere to go. There's, I've seen people say, well, why don't they go somewhere else in Gaza? It's, it's not, it's, it's, there's nowhere to go. There, people are cramped into this little place. There are open spaces, but that would mean people you know, sleeping in fields, uh, you know, or grassy parking lots or things like that. They're trying to get into Egypt. That border's closed by treaty. They're not, they're not, the Egyptians don't let uh, the, the Gazans in and Israel has been bombing along that border. They're not bombing the Egyptian side because that would be an act of war, but they're, they're, they're bombing on this side. So there is nowhere for Gazans to go. Benjamin Netanyahu had said they should clear out because it's going to be bombed. Uh, there's nowhere for them to go. Number two, what is Egypt's role going to be in this whole thing? Uh, Egypt is a neighbor with Israel. Uh, they, they may have to figure out what to do. This is going to be a humanitarian crisis, regardless of what happens if there's any more bombing, because Gaza is under siege. There's no fuel going in. There's no food going in. Uh, there's no water going in. Gaza can't, the reason you can't see Gaza behind me is because it's dark. 
There's no electricity. They're going to run out of all their electricity tomorrow because they generate it in a power plant that is fed with diesel fuel. So this is bad all around, uh, but the pressure is going to be on Egypt to say, what are you going to do about this? Because a humanitarian crisis is on your doorstep right now. And we don't know yet. We can, we can imagine that there are conversations going on between Israel and Egypt and by the United States and Egypt. Egypt is, uh, does have relations, normal relations with both of those countries. So that is yet to be seen. For the thousands of people gathered for the Tribe of Nova Festival, what started as a night of revelry and peace ended up in unimaginable horror. The electronic dance festival in the desert near the Gaza border became one of the first Hamas targets in the early hours Saturday morning. The festival goers left to run and hide in an open field. Attendees described gunmen blocking roads and ambushing cars looking for people to kidnap. At least 260 people were killed there, and an undetermined number were taken hostage. 26-year-old Oria Ricardo was one of those killed at the festival. Her name translates to the light of God in Hebrew. Her mother last heard from her in a text saying, Mom, I love you so much. And joining me now is Aria's mom, Hanin Ricardo. Um, Ms. Ricardo, I am so sorry for your loss, and I thank you for taking the time to be with us. Yeah. Tell me about your daughter, Aria. What was she like? Um, oh, it's pretty hard to speak in past tense about her. Yeah. Um, she was, as her name is, uh, light. She brought light everywhere she came. A very happy girl, uh, loved to party was always the center of everything, every place she came. And she was uh, the source of my, the power of my life, the source of power. Yeah. And, and she... Yeah. And she, she was the youngest of your uh, three girls, the youngest of three. And yes. you, you didn't know that she'd gone to the festival. How did you... How did you find out that she had gone to that festival? Uh, they woke me. I was in New York. Uh, I live in New York. And um, they woke me in the middle of the night, telling me that uh, Oria is missing. And from that moment on, I was just uh, trying to, to get every kind of information from my friends in Israel. and. On the same time to find a flight, and I, 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 I flew to Israel on Sunday afternoon. Came here, came here on Monday afternoon time. I was still hoping because she was in the missing list, and uh, they found her today. I mean, uh, yesterday. I didn't. It's Tuesday at noon time. Yeah. Yeah. And I know this is hard, and I thank you for, for doing this. I, I'm not sure that I could, so I really appreciate you, and you no, take as much time I, as I, you need. I, I, I think that I need to speak about her and for her and for all those 1,200 young people that massacred by the Hamas. They have not a bit of humanity in them. These kids went to dance, and these kids, I know for sure that these parties are peace people. You know, they love, they, they, they all will fight for peace. And now they're gone, and among them, my youngest daughter. And I want to know, I want the world to know that Every dollar you give to the Hamas, every dollar you put there goes for terror. It doesn't go to the poor Arab people that live in Gaza. They could have turned this place into paradise if they would invest money, the billions they got from the, the EU and the UN and other organizations, if they would have put the money invested it into the people of Gaza instead of bombs and focusing on how to get rid of as many Jews, as many 
as Israeli as possible, that might have been peace. And the only thing I can uh, compare these monsters, uh, these inhuman beings, are for the Nazis during the Holocaust, the same kind of people. And the world needs to know, and the world needs to fight them. And I know Israel bombed Gaza, but we never start. We always respond. And I, I feel for these Palestinians, these people, I feel for them, but they are hostages they are hostages in the hands of the Hamas and the Iran and, and all of these terrorists. They have no other focus in life rather than kill as many as possible. And when they're done with the Jews, they will come for the Americans. They did it already in 9-11. And I call this, this massacre that happened in the southern of Israel is even worse than 9-11, this is our 9-11, and my daughter is one of them. This wonderful, this beautiful, cheerful, amazing girl is dead now, and I'm going to bury her day after tomorrow. And my heart is broken to pieces, but I will go everywhere to speak about her, for her, and against this terrorism that goes on in Gaza Strip, and everybody blames Israel. I saw the the uh, the letter that the head of the law bar in in NYU came out blaming Israel for the massacre in in the Gaza Strip. How dare you? How dare they do that? They put the you put pictures of the missiles falling on, on Gaza Strip. My heart is with them as well. But what about us? What about our kids? We invested the money that we have in the, in the Iron Dome. So we can protect. If we would have had the Iron Dome, how many would have been mm -hmm. dead by now? Well, how many? Most...